Great. So on behalf of the Committee on Stochastic Programming, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to this fourth webinar of our webinar series entitled Decision Making in an Uncertain World. I'm Francesca Maggioni from the University of Bergamo in Italy. I'm the Secretary of the Committee on Stochastic Programming. And I will be joined later by, by our COSP Chair, uh, Gudzin Bayraksan from Ohio State University that uh, will moderate the question. So um, just in case uh, you have not done yet, please uh, mute yourself during the um, presentation and uh, keep your question uh, till the end of the presentation. Uh, so Gudzin will uh, help us uh, moderating the question and we'll make some important announcement about uh, the webinar series. So it's my pleasure to introduce all of you, the speaker of today, Professor Alejandro Jufre. Alejandro Jufre is principal researcher at the Mathematical Modeling Center and professor at the Department of Mathematical Engineering at the University of Chile. Uh, he got his PhD in Applied Mathematics in France and postdoctorate at the University of California. He has been professor at the University of Paris 1, Sorbonne, and the University of California, Davids, and guest professor in many universities in US and Europe. He has a recognized research careers in the area of optimization, variational analysis, and economic equilibrium. And he led more than, more than 30 research projects in optimization, big data and analytics, planning and geomechanics in mining, electricity pricing, power system behavior, and many applications on real life problems. But uh, um, behind his important uh, um, and uh, his important scientific career. He's also an important career in terms of uh, academic uh, governance. In fact, uh, he was director of a mathematical modeling center since 2011 to 2017, and he was also deputy director in the previous 10 years. He's associate editor of several important mathematical and engineering journals and book series, and he's currently deputy director of the Center for Resilience to Natural Disaster and a member of the board of the Center for Mining Pilot. He's on the advisory committee of the Energy Center of the University of Chile, and since March, he's also prorector of the University of Chile. He has participated in various national and international committees in the area of energy optimization, mathematics for industry. Just to mention a few of them, he's in the member of the advisory board of the Institute of Mathematics for Industry in Japan since 2015, member of scientific committee of the Center for Mathematical Modeling in Ecuador since 2016, and secretary of the Latin American Mathematical Society since 2017. Recently, he also was honored to be a plenary speaker at the most important conference of the Applied Mathematics, the Simon Conference, which was held in California. So we are really very excited and honored to have uh, Professor Joffre with us today. Uh, he will talk about uh, the level optimization applied to strategic pricing in electricity market and extension to markets with massive entry of renewable energy and distributed generation. Just before to start uh, the talk, as in the previous webinars, uh, we are going to ask our speaker uh, what is uh, his um, um, personal view uh, to decision making in an uncertain world. So we know that is a very important and deep uh, question, but uh, for the lack of time, we ask if it's possible to provide a, a short answer and then to continue the scientific uh, talk. So thank you very much for the attention and please, uh, Professor Jufre, the stage is yours. Uh, th thank you, Francesca, for the nice introduction. Um, I would like to just to say that uh, coming from uh, an area of uh, economic and theory, my experience uh, doing decision-making and uncertainty is a uh, combination of uh, optimization, uh, stochastic optimization, and interaction of uh, different agents in, uh, in systems like uh, electricity market or uh, like telecommunication, or uh, even in the mining sector, I have been involved uh, in uh, modeling in, uh, interaction between different agents with different purpose. Uh, some of them are looking for uh, maximization profit, other minimization cost, but uh, and then all together, then interacting and the uncertainty uh, produce uh, different behavior. And then I've been, uh, our center has been very active uh, 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 advising the, some of the uh, um, people here in Chile con concerning the pandemic. And, uh, and then uh, I've been the one very good example of how uncertainty, how modeling and uh, decision making and uncertainty is so important 
and uh, and then uh, one of the one of the aspects that uh, is very difficult to, to deal with is the, the interaction in, of different Asian uncertainty is the the quality of the data and then uh, as have been one of the main issue here in in Chile during this period, last month uh, quality of data and now uh, and the generation of good scenarios is of course the main main issue and then. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to present today is just an, one example of uh, interaction of different agents and, uh, in, uh, in the system where uncertainty is very important. Okay, so uh, I think I should start my talk, uh, Francesca. Oh, sure, you can, you can go on. Thank you. Okay. So uh, then, uh, what, this is a joint work with, with uh, uh, two co-author, uh, uh, Luis uh, Brodkorn from uh, 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 University uh, in Rio uh, Europe, Lille, and uh, Daniel Pereira, who is uh, working here as a PhD student in, uh, in our center. And then, um, um, then uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, how to um, modeling uh, decisions of, uh, in a system where you have a, a finite number of uh, uh, generators, uh, producer of electricity in this case, and uh, interacting with uh, one very particular agent is called independent system operator. And, and then uh, this interaction is just, was just a good, very good example of uh, interaction of, of uh, agent, some agent maximizing profit, other agent minimizing costs. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to sh show you uh, some uh, new ideas to how to calculate uh, equilibrium in, under, under, uh, in this uh, kind of system in which you have uh, uh, uncertainty coming from uh, at least two sources. One is uh, um, the information, uh, different uh, information. Some of the agents have access to information, others have, have access to other kind of information from one side. And also uh, we have uh, just uncertainty coming from the, uh, the production uh, processes. So, then, um, then this is the outline of the talk. We are going to uh, start first with uh, some motivation and modeling, and the model, and then uh, two uh, um, are going to mo be more specific about uh, the network interaction and the bidders, and, and we are going to do some mathematics, and then a scenario approach for. Uh, uh, I'm going to explain the algorithms and the, the, some some in, interesting convergence result, and and some uh, conclusion at the end. So, well, um, we the motivation is just uh, this idea to have uh, in the electricity market, as you, as you, many of you know and, and very well. There's uh, uh, when we. The, after the 80s, uh, in, the, in the 80s, and then, then the, the electricity uh, market, the sector became private, and then then, uh, then we have then this interaction from from the, that period, the interaction between agent with different uh, objective uh, functions, and uh, and then that that uh, challenges are changing recently because of the uh, the new uh, technology uh, with lower cost like uh, wind energy or uh, solar energy with, uh, with it, in which you have uh, many small generators uh, interacting not only the big one like in the previous uh, um, years and, and the many small generator and then this is many small generator are interacting with uh, the, the big one and then it's very it's very complex to try to understand all this interaction, and then the, and, and the market are been uh, the regulation, the market have been modified because of that. So trying to push uh, uh, to improve uh, to incentive the 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 interaction or the, the, the to incentive the uh, the uh, production of uh, uh, renewable energy because it's cheaper, it's are, uh, are, uh, more uh, clean, and th this is a uh, with. Today, the, the the tension, the interaction, which is 
very complex to try to model. That this work is, the idea of this work is in this line to a bit better. So, Uh, this uh, work is involved in my, in my research. So uh, then let's try to explain first the model. We have then uh, a number of uh, uh, producers, a uh, finite number of producers, and um, so the transactions are organized by means of an auction, which take, takes a, as, as the following. Um, first, the firms uh, bid uh, simultaneous, uh, simultaneously uh, uh, functions, uh, which are usually piecewise linear function, the cost functions, uh, the cost associated to the to the uh, to each uh, generator. In that, in this case, uh, then uh, uh, we have a vector. And the demand for depending on the one one day ahead or demand or one hour ahead demand depending on the market. Then the demand is usually uh, stochastic, and uh, and then uh, after observing the vector bits, the bit submitted by the generator and the demand D, then this specific agent called ISO, the independent system operator. Uh, run a dispatch problem, which is uh, uh, considering all the network constraints, capacity constraints, transmission constraints, and then uh, the, the, the result of this uh, um, optimization problem is, uh, is for one side, you have quantity uh, produced by each generator, uh, and then uh, you, at the same time, from the constraint, you have multipliers. And these multipliers are very important because the multipliers are going to be the prices for uh, the uh, generators. So that is this interaction is that so you are using at the same time the primer and dual information. Primer is the quantity that the uh, generator are going to produce, and uh, and the dual are the prices that, that the generator are going to consider for calculating the profit. So that more specifically, uh, the, 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 this ISO uh, is uh, uh, going to minimize the sum of the total cost. This uh, CN, you see here, the CN are the cost bidded or submitted by the generators. Um, and not necessarily the real cost, that, then, that, that, that here in this model, there is a possibility that the generator with something different than the real cost that they can play strategically. And then we are going to see later how these strategies are, have, have an effect on the final prices. So the CN are the cost bidded by the, by the generators. And then, and then the QN are uh, the uh, quantity of uh, energy uh, that the generator are going to produce. Then you have this, uh, Functions which are as uh, piecewise linear, convex, and then this is a with respect to QN, this is a convex problem, and this, then the, uh, and then you have the sum of this of the all cost and the total cost of the system. Okay, so but you have constraint, the network constraint, because the, in the, in this network the generator are located in the node, and uh, and the in, in the node of the graph. And the transmission lines are just uh, the arcs in the in this graph. So, what kind of constraint? Wait, very, very standard is that from the here you have an inequality that from the right hand side you have the the, the supply of energy. Then, the, for example, is in the node n you have a generator. So this is a quantity generated by generator n. And then plus all the uh, uh, power coming from other nodes, other generators located in different uh, nodes E. So these are key, K, capital KN are all the uh, nodes connected with uh, N. So then, uh, then your supply at node N is the uh, sum of the 
local, genera local generation, QN at the node N, plus all the power flows coming from all the other places. And the, for the demands, you have the, the demand uh, at the node uh, N, presenting just uh, the losses in, uh, on, the, on the lines. So you hear uh, on the right hand side, you have the flows coming from E, for example, from node E to node N. And here on the left, you have uh, this uh, term representing losses. So each, then each time you send power flow from node N to, uh, to node, from node E to node N, you have some quantity losses. Lo lo power flow is losses. And then this coefficient is called resistance. And this, this is just an approximation of uh, losses because the, re the, the full version of the losses model co consider a uh, very nonlinear cosine sine uh, expression uh, for, but this is a, uh, it is called DC approximation. It's kind of a, a, a first order approximation of the losses. So you have a losses, but which is some interesting thing that this inequality, this constraint is that this, this prob problem is uh, convex because you hear, you see here the QN are, uh, which is a one on the uh, unknown is uh, on the right hand side. And the quadratic term is power flow, which is all, all part of the unknown is on the left side. So this is a, a convex uh, in, um, constraint. And if uh, <clears throat> you are located in the node uh, where you don't have a, a generator, it could be a, a city without generator, or then so all the generators are located in, different, in, in, in a different place. So you just uh, remove the, this term QN and the, the rest of the expression, the rest of the terms are the same, okay? Supply low, uh, greater or equal to the demand. Of course, at the, at the optimum, that is going to be equality, right? And, uh, okay, so uh, then this is our, uh, which is called uh, nodal balance or supply, uh, supply uh, demand constraints. And then there are more constraints that are now, I'm going to explain the capacity constraint, but just keep in your mind, and one and two are, supply uh, demand constraint. And then uh, the capacity there, uh, then generation constraint capacity, that means that each generator has a, a capacity Q n bar, uh, which is uh, representing uh, the maximum capacity, right? The maximum capacity of production of the of generator n. And then you have a transmission constraint. It, then that means that when you send a power flow from uh, uh, um, using the arc uh, E, then, then you have a maximum uh, also capacities of transmission. So then three and four are uh, uh, cap uh, capacity constraint. Generation, generation for three, transmission for four. So, uh, then uh, these are the, the summary of the ISO problem. Uh, the ISO problem then is minimizing the sum of the total cost uh, subject to uh, constraints, supply and demand constraints, which is one and two, remember, and three and four are capacity constraints. So these are the feasible plans for the ISO. And the ISO uh, represent is uh, the, the, is a, is a, I, I would like to say that the, the ISO is representing us as a society because we are as a consumer because he the ISO is dealing with the minima, minimizing the total cost of the system so is uh, uh, very important because uh, we want to have a system that uh, producing electricity at minimum cost right and then this is uh, one one very important uh, agent in the, in the system. But at the same time, we have a generator, which are uh, part of the system, that the uh, generator, uh, of course, uh, maximizing uh, profit. So I will, uh, okay, yeah, just this mathematical uh, remark that this, uh, under very standard uh, assumption, this um, omega D, the feasible plan, certified the good property for have existing. And this problem is then it's a convex problem. And the feasible set is uh, uh, come back to convex, and then so this we don't have any any issue in that. Uh, 
Uh, one important remark is that um, then the uh, optimal solution for this uh, ISO is uh, opti the optimal quantity associated to each generator. Q Q is the vector. Q is the vector of, uh, gen of uh, gen generations associated to the generators. F is the power flows, and uh, and then you have from the uh, I'm going to come back to the previous uh, slide from this. Uh, um, from this uh, constraints, you have uh, one. You can ha have a, a multiplier associated to um, supply and demand constraint, which are, we are going to use. And of course, also you have a multiplier associated to capacity constraint, right? Okay. So, uh, with respect to producer, the producer. Uh, as I, I explained before, the producer are building uh, these functions, these y linear functions, um, C, and, C and Q, and the payoff, uh, the objective function for the generator is just uh, standard, is uh, um, it's just uh, uh, this quantity, price Q, uh, the, 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 this is going to be the, uh, the Price time quantity minus the C. This is a new ingredient in the model. C hat n. Uh, C hat n represent the real cost. So, so this is a very important uh, remark here. C n is the cost bid it, and C n hat is the real cost. So the profit for the generator is just the difference between uh, price time quantity minus the real cost. So uh, then these are in terms of uh, uh, in information, and in some sometime in the model, this quant this uh, C N hat the real cost is hidden. It's private information. Sometimes it's public information, depending on the regulation, depending on the system. Sometimes in some of the system, this real cost is monitoring. It's part of the regulation. Sometimes this not monitoring. It's just uh, private information. So the then the, the profit is just expectation of this function because the demand is stochastic, so you take expectation with respect to demand. Then, uh, where uh, in, in an important ingredient here is that uh, in this expression, uh, why it is so complex the interaction of for, for between the generator and the ISO is because the, the this the, these two quantity P and Q. <clears throat> are given by the ISO. P is the multiplier associated to uh, supply and demand constraint, and Q is the optimal solution of the ISO. So but these two quantities are coming from the ISO. P is the dual information, is the, is the lambda uh, multiplier associated to supply and demand constraint, and Q is the primal information just uh, the optimal solution of the of the ISO. So the, these two quantities uh, so are here. Then you, you, you can see here UN P is now lambda and Q is the optimal solution of the ISO. Then both are optimal solution dual, dual and prime, right? Okay, so this is the profit. So this function is very complex because you see here all the, all the costs Bidded by the generator are involved here. The same for Q. So uh, that means that the uh, <clears throat> the um, we are here with respect to the variable um, to, to the C to the function bidded. Maybe I, I should say something more here. The generator are bidding cost function. So the, for the generator, the, the bidding cost curve this is the, 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 the generator can the decision in, in his decisions are, uh, are for them, for the generator, the, the, the curve bidding is, is crucial. 
is very, very important. So they, they can, the generator can play uh, about how the, the, the cost curve, right? So here, when you look at the, this function as a function of the bidding curve, the C, the C n in this case, remember C is the vector, is C n. So when you look at the behavior of this function with respect to C, if you are losing convexity, like, or if you are maximizing, you are losing concavity. Why? Because the lambda and the Q are the optimal solution of the uh, dual and primal. So you, you know that in, in general, we don't have a good probability of the lambdas and the, the, the optimal solution primal dual with respect to the uh, vector C, n, right? Then the, we so that is show later a nice picture for the each generator. So okay, look at clear with respect to the bidding functions. Here we have an example, an example of in uh, in in the point Q prime Q prime. This the this or represent the quantities and the, here is the, the cost okay so quantity cost and then and then and second is low, low uh, beta one two or three your piecewise linear convex function and and uh, and then you can the then the, the generator can and the betas are the variable for the for the for the generator in in the, in, the, in his decision, right? So he can play with this. Um, the real cost, bitted, okay? Usually, it's that like that, right? Usually, it's uh, this cost uh, function bitted is over the real cost. Huh? Okay, uh, the. These are uh, uh, the piecewise linear bit cost function, and uh, if, uh, the uh, the, uh, the the calculation part, the algorithm specific uh, um, um, remark concerning the um, okay. uh, we have a number. Of, as I said before, we have a finite number of generators. Uh, 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 n um, um, p is y linear function uh, defined by these slopes just to explain uh, alpha k and beta k and k prime all right the, that, that, uh, this is uh, an example of uh, of uh, the case where you have uh, two two um, intervals one uh, the in, 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 in the first interval for each function you have the slope is alpha k and for the second in interval the slope is beta k uh, and then to keep in con con convexity right okay so uh, for k Uh, we have uh, for, we have this not just notation for the generator. Uh, um, thought as a two generator, right? Because in, in, in because okay, let me make one here, okay, and then uh, and you change to a slope. Why you change the slope? Because maybe. For the generator, for this generator, you have this slope, which represents the technology for the generator. Uh, uh, one it produces so that could be I don't know for maybe uh, solar energy, and then it is gas. So then gas now. So then you have uh, alpha one, then for beta for uh, 
for uh, after Q prime. So when you reach this capacity of solar, you change the technology to some this uh, uh, natural uh, condition here because of the cost function are are, are uh, you put first the uh, cheaper, then this more, the, then the, then more expensive, and then even later more expensive. You want to have different many intervals when you change the technology. Or, or, or you change it, for example, if you are renewable, sometimes that depends on the wind, depends on solar and so on. Okay, so uh, just uh, uh, one, one, one important thing here is uh, I would like to stress, uh, and then that is, that is connected with some, another area of uh, mathematics, is again theory. One, one point is how to, what, what, what under, what, but sorry, what information can you, uh, the, the generator can use to uh, be uh, in, a, in, a, in, in, a, in a strat in a strategic way? Well, one, it depends on the, how much information the generator have. So, uh, and here are going to, to uh, propose, uh, the, this is part of the new things in, in, its, uh, in, in this work, uh, well, look, just to fix the idea, we take a generator I, then, uh, then uh, we have uh, uh, a, a set of uh, scenarios, other generators, uh, bit functions. So, uh, then How, how, how the generator are going to use, because what I'm going to assume here in, in this model is that uh, the, all the uh, cost functions are bidded, uh, then this information became public. So problem, then one of the, apart the, the, the The optimal solution of multiplier and the, the, the optimal solution through the cost function built by the other players. Okay, so um, this is to use in some way. The information built by the other the games because remember if we are doing. Looking for well, we think that this is a, uh, then in the case of the head market or one our head market. So you are going for the uh, other player behavior, right? Because you you have a, for example a, every day you are playing this game, so you have behavior of the other. player okay what what kind of the other players right uh, so when what we're going to assume that here is I can learn from this is why I put here learning games I can learn the from the other player uh, using the information uh, of the player uh, and I, I'm going to use this I want more modeling this and then I'm going to use this uh, learning process from the previous uh, uh, bidding process uh, to uh, in my decision about uh, how much I, I should bid to get more profit. Okay. Uh, okay. So and there are <clears throat> one 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 way to do that uh, is to use uh, uh, which is called fictitious play uh, uh, in uh, learning games and fictitious plays. Just uh, just to, I went to this, just summarize. Fictitious place means that uh, I'm going to use the uh, as an information for me as a generator the average of the the average of the frequency of the other cost period. So here I am thinking that the other I just uh, uh, um, modeling uh, as a finite number discrete number finite number of uh, possible. Uh, bit bit functions of, of the other player, and then I can I can I can observe 
the frequency of how much each uh, uh, how much time uh, the uh, how many times uh, the each generator uh, is a, a bit different uh, cost bit different cost functions and then I can deduce from the average uh, part of the information about the the the, 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 the previous uh, bidding functions. And then I use this information in my uh, decision. Um, this is one possibility. And the other possibility that uh, the problem with this uh, learning using fictitious play behavior is that uh, we don't have uh, convergence uh, pro with convergent properties. So we are not using that. We are going uh, more, we are going to use which is called dynamic fictitious plays, which is, uh, as I uh, have written here, this best responding and reacting to other player by forecasting the play. And forecasting the play, this means here that I am not going only using the frequency, the observation of the frequency of the, uh, of the uh, with respect to the uh, past bidder, but also I'm going to observe the, which is called the derivative with, with respect to the, the derivative of the of these changes in the and the frequency of the of the of the bid uh, of the previous bid. So uh, that is better in terms of the convergence. So um, okay. So this is uh, this correspond to um, the the generator i. The generator i is now. As I explained before, is maximizing uh, this function, which corresponds to the just expected uh, uh, profit. Here you have the lambdas multipliers, the quantities, minus the real cost. This this uh, this is a model for the for the uh, gener gener generator, and is a the, for the generator is a bi-level problem. Uh, why? Because the generator is maximizing. I, I, here I have said in the case or two just a two slope remember alpha and beta and then uh, this generator are the maximizing profit but under the con the, the, con the condition that uh, q and lambda are coming from the optimal solution of the iso the primary and dual information right so this is a real by level problem <clears throat> And uh, it's a complex, but it, then each generator is getting is solving this 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 problem. Then this maximizing with respect to the possible bidding function alpha beta here. Just in, in this example, only two interval, only two slopes uh, are going to be defined by the generator. And then maximizing this uh, with respect to alpha beta uh, so, uh, under subject to uh, that if subject to that this information Q and lambda are coming from the ISO. So you have this problem and, uh, and um, okay. And uh, then uh, these are a, a picture, one, one example of uh, um, profit function. You see, can see, you can see here, you don't have uh, in any case convexity or concavity here and for this function. And, and you're maximizing, then you're looking for concavity, then you don't have concavity. Even you do, you have discontinuity sometimes. And, uh, and discontinuities are coming from the fact that some, when you have um, two player bidding the same price, then you have some breaking rules for dealing with this. And, uh, and the, the, the excess demand, uh, when you have equal prices, the excess demand is uh, divided by half for, for one, half for, for the other one, and that, Produce this kind of discontinuities. So the 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 this so this function is not very good. They have very good behavior, and you lose convexity, you lose also sometimes even the continuity. Okay. So, but there are some. This is the bad news, but there are some good news. For example, uh, we have that uh, the the previous problem can be rearranged uh, as an MPEG problem, and then uh, here you can see. I put together uh, now just to, some, after some calculation, I have a maximization problem um, with respect to alpha i, qi, and lambda here uh, of this profit function. And all these constraints here are, are here now. The, um, and, and our the constraints are of the with respect to the ISO are involved here, the capacity constraint supply and demand constraint are all here. So 
then uh, it's, uh, it's not so complicated to, to realize that, that it's possible to re uh, write the, um, the bi-level problem for the generator as an uh, MPEG, like, 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 he, like this. And, uh, and then once you do that, then you can, uh, this, all these constraints are simple except this one, because here, remember the unknown are alpha and QI and lambda, and then you, 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 can, you have here uh, the, this uh, nonlinear uh, term, right? Because you have the uh, multiplication of these two uh, unknown, unknown, and then it's usually it's not easy to deal with this. Um, but uh, uh, remember that here we are uh, looking only the generator I. So in this sum, only uh, the nonlinear part are alpha i q i because the other the other term are given for the gen for the generator i right are given and are given when they say given are coming from the from the from the information that the generator have about the other players. So these are this this term is in the nonlinear complex term. So what we are going to do just to penalize this term. Yeah. Okay. So in, in here in this new um, equivalent uh, formulation, uh, we have uh, with uh, large enough mu, we have this penalization term. Okay. The rest of the equation are the same except for the nonlinear. Uh, this nonlinear um, constraint that become here a uh, penalized uh, term in the objective function. And then uh, these are going to be the formulation we're going to take for uh, calculation. And uh, just to, if uh, mu is uh, large enough, we have then equivalent between all these problems, okay? Okay, so now I just uh, I would like to uh, uh, talk a bit about the, um, um, the algorithms uh, in the last uh, uh, 10 minutes. Then uh, <clears throat> for the, with respect to the algorithm, just uh, um, uh, some remark. Uh, we're going to use uh, the, um, here, once we have this penalization uh, uh, mod, mod, uh, model like this, it's just a simple optimization problem. It's not very complicated. But the, which is more complicated and when, when is the interaction now because each generator is doing that. So, but now the, the, we, we need to uh, put all together, all, all these pieces of uh, generator and the ISO all together interacting, right? So, <clears throat> so uh, for example, in this here, in this example, we have three um, um, players, okay? Uh, we have three players and a very simple geometry of uh, the graph that are play, are connected in that way. So we have uh, three players uh, with uh, different uh, cost function. They can be different cost function, right? Play, play generator one, generator two, and three are connected very simply way to one node, which is the demand node. Here we don't have demand at this node. We have just the demand at the node zero. And then uh, the demand is here is just to equal to two, and then the each generator uh, is using slopes uh, alpha and beta, <clears throat> and um, and then these are the just number for the real cost, um, important for calculating the, the profit, and these are the numerical result. Um, if you have, uh, um, remember here, the player one and player two, for example, uh, you have the cost uh, function gi uh, given, and then these are expected payoff for the, for the player one, calculated given that the, this, uh, given that uh, the, the cost function of the other player, right? This is a simple optimization problem. And uh, these are just a picture with respect to how how much increase the, the time when you look at the different um, um, scenarios for uh, for uh, for the for the bidding, bidding curve. And uh, and but now uh, in uh, what what happened when we put all together? Well, for when you put all together, you're then solving this uh, penalized term, penalized optimization model for each generator, but at the same time, you, so, okay, if you have 10 generators, you're going to solve 10 times this, but given the, the, the reaction of the other one, the other one. So you have re, real Nash equilibrium problems. 
And for this, we use just use the uh, classical or well, modified uh, modification of this Lenke Hobson uh, uh, <coughs> algorithms to get something uh, interesting. Uh, we have here what you look at in this picture is uh, okay. If you if you think in terms of uh, game theory, uh, the fact that you have this, uh, if you remember the the classical Nash uh, existing result, uh, the Nash existing result require concavity with respect to the strategy. When you are as you are maximizing, you require concavity, and and and, and you I, and I show you before then that we don't have concavity, we have this behavior, very strange with these continuities and, and, and even, and you, in, in any case, we are, we don't have concavities, all right? So what, 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 what the people do in game theory, and, and I guess we do that also in this uh, work, is work with mixed strategy. Did, that means that instead of working with uh, this cost bidded, we work with the probability on the cost with the space, okay? And uh, that we are going, to, that I'm uh, showing here is the result of this calculation. That so we are calculating mixed strategy equilibrium solution because we don't, uh, in, in many cases, we don't have access to the bidding curve. We only have uh, access to the probability on the space of the bidding curve. Uh, then that is uh, made here, uh, and then one 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 interesting um, result that we get here is when you look at the uh, probability of the, this mixed strategy, which are probability on the space of uh, a bidding curve. These probabilities are very close from the probability coming from the least learning process that I explained before. So, which is very surprising and, and, and nice and in the sense that. Of course, it's not a theorem, but just uh, showing that in practice, some, we are observing that the uh, mixed strategy are, are that we get from the Nash equilibrium is are closer from the uh, probability distribution coming from the learning process in uh, in this uh, uh, repeated game that I explained before. Right? Remember, I, I say that we, this is a game that is played many times. And the, the agent are learning from the bid for the cost bid by the other player, and then at the end you get an approximation, and then this approximation of this uh, is uh, is are close from uh, the uh, mixed strategy solution when you compute in this uh, at least in this example so that we just uh, uh, described. Uh, okay, I am not saying this is a theorem because it's, very, it's going to be complicated to, to prove that. It's just a remark uh, from the observation when we ca calculate this uh, solution. Um, uh, the other option, the other option, <coughs> I just explained that uh, we are using piecewise linear, but some authors are also using quadratic, uh, quadratic uh, bidding, which is uh, also uh, interesting. I just put here what happened, or how the model changed. We use quadratic bidding curve, quadratic piecewise. Uh, convex instead of piecewise linear convex, but and then just a, a couple of simulations showing that um, we have uh, uh, changes in the expected payoff. The expected pay we this is the case the comparison between the linear case piecewise linear with respect to piecewise quadratic. You have this gap here, while the scale show what well, is not so different, but there's some there is a difference. But no, it's not so important, but there, there is a difference between using a uh, piecewise linear with respect to using quadratic, uh, quadratic piecewise uh, bidding function. The other question is uh, uh, if we are, uh, I show you uh, one uh, in the model, remember these losses on the, on, the, on, the, on the lines when you send an, an, a power from one node to another. Well, uh, here that's a picture showing that uh, the different between consider and non-consider losses is not it's not so important in when, in, in terms of uh, the consequence in this game okay and and then just uh, uh, this is a more mathematical result saying that if you I can explain uh, just uh, uh, 
a very simple way. That result, this formula is just the same that if you change a bit, uh, uh, a bit the. Um, if you change a bit the, the, the probability distribution, the probability, then uh, the, the result doesn't change too much. No? So it's just a perturbation. You perturb a bit the probability distribution so that the result doesn't change too much. Okay. I think then uh, just a conclusion, then uh, we have, uh, um, uh, we, uh, we are then here, just uh, we like to conclude saying that we, are, we were able to model um, a system where a uh, finite number of generator interacting in, in the way I just explained, some, some uh, most of the agent are maximizing profit and we have one agent minimizing cost. And then uh, we are, Introducing this idea of learning uh, from the past uh, of uh, in the, this building process, and then uh, we use you, we are using that for uh, uh, integrating this information in the decision making process for the generator, and using this information we have some numerical uh, results and one convergent result uh, for in, in the in the in the simple case in some simple case of piecewise linear functions. And, and then, uh, of, co of course, uh, we are co computing Nash equilibrium too, uh, but uh, in, in the case of uh, the number of uh, agents, you know, it's not very high, and the number of studies is not, is not, is not uh, large, but when we compute, we discover that it's a very interesting connection between mixed strategy for the Nash equilibrium and this, uh, the result of this learning process. So this is, this is something to explore and we want to work more about it, to trying to understand this connection from the theoretical point of view. Why this uh, mixed strategy uh, probability distribution are connected with this, uh, the, res the result of the learning process. So I think I, I'm gonna stop here. Some, these are the, some the reference we are using in this work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, seminar. Um, so we're now open to questions. And uh, the way we do it is um, um, typically, um, you know, please type your questions in the chat area. Um, it seems like we're some connection issue, but uh, also you can, if you feel, if you want to do it, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, so, um, Okay, one of the connect one of the question is uh, connected with uh, this bilevel problem. Um, then what happened if we have a, a mixed uh, integer and continuous variable, right, in the lower level? Because in our in our in, our, in our model we only have continuous continuous variable. So if you have integer integer variable, is that that the problem has become much com more complicated. I, I, uh, we do, we are our technique is not able to deal with, with the integer variables. Uh, integer variable produces discontinuities, more con more discontinuity that we have already, and uh, and uh, with this is why in, in this model is more oriented to a contingent variable, and uh, is more connected with the the strategy bidding process and and the Nash equilibrium uh, um, um, calculation more than to introduce the idea of integer variable, but I know that integer variable is important because are connected with the uh, ramp up constraint or connected with the other uh, interesting constraints. For example, if you, you want to introduce investment constraints, sometimes the investment constraints depend on, on, on um, integer variables, but we are not able to, do, to deal with the integer variables in the bilevel problem. And um, and then uh, yeah, with respect to the equivalence of the models, uh, the equivalence uh, are uh, just a classical result when uh, you penalize. You have a bilevel problem, and we are able to prove that uh, for this case in the piecewise uh, linear case, bidding bidding in, in piecewise bidding case, 
that uh, both problem, the, um, the uh, bilevel problem and the, and the uh, penalized problem are equivalent for uh, mu, for the penalization term uh, large enough. Uh, it's just uh, calculation. We don't, we don't, uh, it's just calculation, but, but it's interesting because then a bilevel problem became an optimization problem with uh, this penalization term and then we have good behavior and the algorithm, when we apply the algorithms, this mu is not so high. When for getting the optimal solution, this mu, of course, increased to getting uh, uh, the optimal, but it's not, we don't require a mu uh, too high for getting the, the, right, the right optimal solution. Um, okay. Um, so you can also write your um, questions on the chat so that everyone, um, you know, to, to everyone instead of Alejandro. Mm -hmm. uh, um, any other questions? You, you received some? Yes, I have AMC, another one. Um, yes, okay. Um, yes, so in some cases, uh, Felipe Feijo is asking about the one question. In some cases, I, I am, we are able to get pure strategy. Uh, for example, in, the, in simple cases, depending on the, the geometry of the graph, between uh, the connection between nodes, demand nodes and production, production nodes, sometimes we are able to, to get uh, pure strategy, um, uh, Nash equilibrium. But in general, uh, we are not able to uh, uh, just uh, we just, we just get a, a mixed strategy, but but it's but it's interesting because I, as I say at the end, mixed strategy are in some way, and we have the intuition about uh, and and the, and the simulation show that there are a connection between mixed strategy and the this uh, uh, learning process uh, when when you play this game uh, many times and then as a consequence of the repeat game. So this is something. I think uh, deep that to, we need to explore more. Okay, so there is a question by Sabash here. Um, do you iteratively solve for each scenario or do you calculate the expectation? No, we iterate, we iterate, yes. Yeah. We iterate for each scenario, yes. Yeah. So the next one is uh, from Bruno. Um, hi Alejandro, thank you for the seminar. The problem studied is for a single period market, is this correct? Any thoughts on the properties of multi-period market equilibrium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, uh, well, this is a very good question. Uh, we are just one period, right? Because, uh, well, well, it's, it's just one, you, you, we could say that it's, just, it's two period in the sense that the, 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 the producer uh, bid one, uh, the, the, the cost bid function today, for example, and tomorrow morning the ISO solve the problem and, and, and send back the prices, the, the multiplier optimal solution. So in some ways to a stage, but uh, it's real, it's, it's only one process of the uh, decision making, right? So we don't, uh, and then this game, if you think in terms of day had market, you have this game play every day. So if you try to, Consider that the okay. If you try to uh, model to model that the producer is looking not only tomorrow but after tomorrow and the next week, so you have a multi-period problem. But that really became a mess. I don't know how to uh, uh, prove good re good, good re uh, result in, in terms of game theory when you have multi-period. Uh, I prefer to think in, in terms of this game is repeated many times every day, and then in, in, in every day you have the process just explain it. But uh, uh, if you want to consider in decision today all the possibility for next week, and then, uh, I think it's something that a very interesting point in question. Uh, but uh, we are so far we are only consider uh, repeated game this that one they had market. Okay. Uh, Emmanuel, I think is the next one. Uh, how many graphs and nodes were used in the model? How many? 
nodes and graphs. Okay. Yes. Well, for the for the, the we we the, the example I just show you here uh, 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 is just ten in, in numerical. The simulation are just uh, ten nodes and uh, and and uh, I don't know uh, twenty uh, arcs. Uh, but uh, in, uh, but uh, the album is able to do with the 100 nodes and uh, and, uh, and 200 and 200 300 arcs, right? So that this is the order of magnitude of, of the of the graph we are able to deal with. Um, uh, so next question uh, is Francisco, and uh, he's asking about uh, breakpoints. Are the oh, breakpoints yeah. fixed? Yeah, no, the break, the, the break, the break point are part of the are part of the unknown. So, we, what we 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 have we have here what we we do that in the in the work is to have a uh, um an uh, a number of uh, possibility breakpoints. For example, we disk decide we have the disk decision of the possible uh, uh, breaking point, and then uh, we are we I, I show you in one of the picture. We just uh, we, we consider uh, different slope, different in, in, uh, in the in the discretization with different slope and different breakpoint. We are we get around one million of possibilities, right? So this is what this is the, the one of the picture I showed you before. So the 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 breakpoint is a part of the unknown. It's not fixed, eh? but what is uh, we have the discretization of this. Otherwise become a continuous problem, right? An infinite dimensional continuous problem. We don't want to deal with this because it's very difficult to have this continuous, infinite dimensional continuous. Then uh, we uh, reduce the problem to uh, find a dimensional this with uh, using the discretization of the slopes and the breaking point. Okay, so next question is from Carlos Ruiz. Is it possible to linearize the product lambda star quantity without approximation, but at the cost of obtaining a single level MILP equivalent right. to the MPEG? Have you yeah, explored yeah. this possibility? Yeah, this, yeah, this is a good, also a good question, and uh, we are we are, we also have explored that using uh, this uh, McCormy transformation. Yes, we are using that. We are exploring this possibility. Is a uh, uh, we don't know so far this is a more advantage to do that, but it's, it's possible to move, move from this bi-level, uh, sorry, uh, bilinear uh, function from to uh, um, single uh, MILP equivalent problem, yes. Okay. And uh, next one is uh, from Shavash. Uh, can your algorithm handle VE ISO, ISO prices, this happens with renewables in the market. Yes, yes, the model is able to do that. Yes, yes. Okay, and uh, Paritosh is asking, I saw the graph where you put mixed strategies and looks like a knee graph. Can we say that the optimal solution obtained using this approach is a Pareto based solution? Uh, well, um, you know, um, if you what we we cannot say that it's Pareto, but we can well, what we can say is that among all the Nash equilibrium, and this is a very important point, among all the Nash posts, because usually this problem have many uh, mixed Nash equilibrium in in, in uh, at equilibrium, right? Uh, we don't we don't have units in, in 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 the in the usual case. We have many Nash equilibrium. So, but. Remember, the ISO is minimizing the, uh, the, 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 the total cost. So among all the possible Nash equilibrium, we are choosing uh, the Nash equilibrium minimizing the sum of the total, uh, the sum of the cost, the total cost. That means that among all possible Nash equilibrium, we are choosing this social uh, Nash, which is the, uh, the Nash that minimizes the, the total cost. So in some way, we, we are approaching this idea of Pareto, social Pareto, but we, it's not, uh, in, in, in a strict way, it's not Pareto uh, optimal point. Thank you. Um, so next question is Leo, there you go, I assume. Uh, when you update the learning parameters, do the agents have access to the previous bidding strategies of all the other investors? Um, 
Yes, uh, we one of the con uh, hypotheses uh, what we are uh, uh, using here and is is realistic is uh, is that once the, the breeding process uh, finish, uh, all, all the agents have access to the all the agents have access to the, to the, to the, um, the, have access to, the to the previous bidding strategies. This is public information. And it's, uh, it's, it's real in the sense that uh, in, uh, in, in many markets, I know this uh, uh, information become public. Okay, so this is why we are the, le the learning process is uh, is based on this uh, previous strategies, the public information. And then the next one is uh, have you explored giving agent risk aversion? Yes, yes, we have explored that. With you. This is a a different work with a different uh, PhD student where we just a simple um, what we are how, how what we are doing is the following renewable energy one way to uh, modeling renewable energy is to have uh, for example wind or solar is to is to have uh, the capacity Q bar with that, that uh, we denote Q bar is now stochastic okay because we don't know for tomorrow how much uh, wind we are going to have or how much solar we are going to have for tomorrow. So Q bar became stochastic. So if it became stochastic, then we use, uh, we add a, a risk term in the objective function, the ISO, in, in dealing with the, the certainty on the, on, the, on the capacity for the renewal. So in that, in that sense, the difference between the renewal and non-renewal is that for non-renewal, for example, gas supply, the capacity is given and is, is known, or the uncertainty is very uh, small. But for the renewal, the certainty is more, is more high. And then we introduce this risk term in the objective function for the ISO. And then this is very nice because that you have to see here, there the trade-off between uh, lower cost for the renewal, but more uh, uh, uncertainty on the renewal. So this is uh, then the ISO must to, must uh, then deal with this trade-off between uh, lower cost and more uncertainty. Okay. Any other questions? I don't see any others. Um, okay. I think uh, did, did Alejandro, did you receive anything? I am seeing uh, no. I think we are we cover. I think, I think everybody. Cover, everybody. I think. All right. Yeah. Um, well, thank you again so much for this uh, great talk, and uh, thanks everybody for participating and for your questions uh, as usual. And um, so I would like to end by just announcing our next speaker. Um, <clears throat> is that, is so. That yeah, two weeks from now, uh, we have another great speaker. This time we're again uh, going to Europe. Uh, Danielle Kuhn will be presenting. Uh, again, July 24th, please mark your calendars, uh, same time. And uh, his talk will be about from moderate deviations theory to distribution and robust optimization, learning from correlated data. So, um, and I hope to see all of you there uh, again. All right, thank you. Thank you again uh, for the invitation. And uh, if you have any question, send me a e message.